I've been writing Go for the last couple years, and today I wanna to share my insights with you on the best ways to get started learning Go. I actually got recruited to my current position while writing Go in public. So building in public on my Twitch channel and doing all of that in Go while I was learning it. My first tip is actually gonna come from these beginnings of learning Go. Use a linter, please. I was using NeoVim and had no idea what I was doing. So I did not have a linter, nor did I have a language server. And it sucked. I don't know what I was thinking. I don't know how or why that didn't like dissuade me entirely from programming at that point. It's gonna tell you whether your code is idiomatic with the best practices in the language. So for example, if you have a redundant else statement or your Go doc uh, doesn't match what it should, all the tedious little things, your linter will make sure that you know it. The nice thing about Go is that it's a compiled language, so you're gonna get compiler errors and your linter and all of those things are gonna be able to babysit you into writing good code. We love Go for that. Let it babysit you, enjoy it, lean into it. Speaking of babysitting, tests are pretty important. And thankfully the built-in test suite for Go is amazing, amazing. Like there is no reason not to write tests in Go because it is so good and built into the language. So my first recommendation actually for people that are looking to get started with learning how to write Go is learn Go with tests. It's essentially a book that breaks down all of the fundamentals of Go into different sections and it teaches you through interactive test-driven development. So you write the test first and it's obviously a failing test and then you write the solution in Go and it walks you through what the solution is and why it works and all those things. It's encouraging some best practices there of making sure that your code is tested and keeping it concise, meaning it is built to just pass this test. So Learn Go with Tests was great for me. I finished most of it, or I'd say about 50% of it actually, before I started trying to build something on my own, which I would recommend doing. Definitely start building your own project. It's a great way to really solidify your skills and start to branch out to things that might be a little bit beyond your comfort zone. This also goes hand in hand with learning to read documentation, but my first thing that I'll talk about is the project side. As an example, I started building a journal for devlogs and that one was my PJs project. It started out as a very, very basic CLI. And then at a certain point, I wanted the ability for the users to be able to see all of their projects and choose from their projects and then be able to see the entries from there. Given those requirements, I did at a certain point add a text UI, which is how I came about Bubble Tea, which is built by Charm by the way. That was one of the layers of complexity for me. Another one was adding a database, but there's different ways that you can add complexity and I would definitely recommend just add one thing at a time and try and go from there. On to reading documentation. I think that documentation can be very intimidating at first. Thankfully, the Go doc that is built into the language encourages well-documented code, very well-documented libraries as well. Learning to read documentation is what's going to allow you to expand beyond what you thought possible. It's what's gonna allow you to actually build from something from scratch and continue to extend that into something that you maybe didn't even think you could build. If you are someone who feels like they still need to be following tutorials, with tutorials, I think the best way to really get the bang for your buck is try to extend beyond what the tutorial gives you. So for example, if at one point you are printing the output to the terminal, so you're printing to standard out, why not try and write that to a file? It brings you just a little bit more complexity, a little bit more of a challenge that isn't demonstrated in the tutorial, but can definitely be achieved using documentation. I think blogs are great for walking you through how to do different things in a new language, but definitely I try to lean most on documentation and books just because I find that sometimes Google can be quite the little rabbit hole and you end up reading a bunch of different blogs and it ends up being more confusing than it is helpful. Another thing that I think makes Go such a great language is its community. It has an incredible Slack community that is very welcoming. They'll help you get a job. They'll help you learn the language. They're very, very cool, very nice people. One thing that I would recommend anytime that I'm learning anything new, write down every single question that comes to mind. And then as I get more familiar with the topic, I will review the questions and try and answer them for myself. 
At a certain point, I will find that there are certain questions that I still can't answer. Nothing seems to be able to answer it for me. Then I will ask it to a more senior developer, usually through one of these online communities, whether it be Slack, Discord, Discourse, Matrix. Okay, don't ask, can I ask a question? All right, mm -mm -mm. don't do it. Let me know how you learned Go. If you are a Go developer, what were some of the strategies that you used? Did I mention it in the video? Did I forget about it? Did I not? Maybe I don't even know about it. So let me know in the comments below. I will also link a couple of books that I thought were helpful and that helped me in my journey of learning Go. If you're interested in seeing some of my Go related videos, I will link one up here. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.